Hello and welcome. Try this problem on your own, and then when you're ready, press play and we'll solve it together. Let's start by reading the problem. It says that Rachel and Mark were given the information shown below about bacteria growing in a petri dish in their biology class. So we've got hours and the number of bacteria. Rachel wants to model this information with a linear function, and Mark wants to use an exponential function. Which model is the better choice? Explain why you chose this model. So here, um, first of all, when we see bacteria growth, Typically, the kind of um, problem uh, model, excuse me, that works better for bacteria growth, just like any population growth, uh, is not linear, but probably exponential. It's not guaranteed, but the first thing I'm thinking is, yeah, it's probably going to be exponential. And exponential is a situation where you repeatedly multiply by a number. Uh, linear, of course, is a situation where you repeatedly add an amount. And my first thought is, well, we add 60 here, and then we add 70, and then we add 90, and then we add 110. I notice we're adding a little bit more each time. So this doesn't look like it's going to be a good linear fit. But really, what we have to compare are the R values, right? We have to compare the correlation coefficient. That's a measure of how good of a fit each model really is. So the higher the correlation coefficient, the better the fit. The two extremes for the correlation coefficient are when we have r equals 1, that's a perfect linear positive fit, excuse me, a perfect positive fit, it doesn't have to be linear, but it's just a perfect positive fit. So if r is equal to 1, it's a perfect fit with a positive slope. If r is negative 1, it's also a perfect fit. These are perfect fits. If r is close to 0, it's a terrible fit. So we can look at these numbers in that relative way, but also when we're comparing them directly, the uh, correlation coefficient that has the higher absolute value is the better fit. So if it's closer to negative 1 or closer to 1 than the other one, then it's a better fit. So how do we do this? Well, probably the best strategy here is to use the graphing calculator. And what we could do is press the stat button and hit edit. I have some old data here. I want to clear it out. The fastest way for me to clear list is to hit second plus and if you see choice four, that's clear all list. So I'll hit that, hit enter. Now I go back to stat and everything's cleared out. Beautiful. Now I enter in my X data, the number of hours, and I'm just gonna look at it. It looks like it goes just one through 10. It counts right up. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that one was easy enough. Now we enter the number of bacteria, 220, 280, and 350, let me slide this over. Okay, we've got 440, 550, 690. Okay, then we have 860, which is entering in the Y values. And then 1070, 1340, and 1680. And, oops, entered those two wrong, 1340. And... 1680. Oh boy, I'm having an issue here. Sometimes this program is laggy. Look, there we go, 1340 and 1680. Boom. Now we do our fit. So we can do both fits from the same commands, pretty much. We hit stat and calc. Choice four is the linear regression, so I hit choice four. And it defaults to list one and list two, but I'll enter them anyway, just to show you how that works. You enter second one for list one, comma, second two for list two. That tells me the first list is our x values, comma, second list is our y values, hit enter. And this gives us the equation. Now notice the r value is not there, so we have to turn that on. There are two ways to turn it on. I'll show you the one that works on most calculators. You hit second, catalog, which go down to the letter D here. So we hit second, zero. Now we're in alpha mode, so that means our letters work the letters above the buttons here. I need to scroll out to diagnostic on, so I hit the button with the D above it. That's X to the negative first. That brings me down to the D section, and then I just scroll down until I reach diagnostic on. Just keep going. Oh, and there it is. Diagnostic on, enter, enter. Now when I go back to stat, calc, choice four, now it gives me the R value. So um, the R value, that's all we need to keep track of, is 0.96, right? So R for the linear, I'll write it down here, linear, is about 0 0.9, what was it, 64. We'll leave it there. So we're rounding that. What is the R value for the exponential? And whichever one's higher, that's the better fit. So we're going to round it probably. So let's go to that, go to stat, calc. 
Now, linear fit, we just have to scroll down a little bit. Past linear, past, past quadratic, that's for parabolas. Past cubic, that's when you have x to the third power. This is another linear regression. This is logarithmic regression, we don't need that. There's choice zero, exponential regression. Enter, enter, and you can see we get a much higher R value, 0 0.99999, right? Uh, six, so four nines, 0 0.99996. That is higher than 0 0.96400, I'll put. Um, right, this six is lower than this nine, so it's a lower number. So the exponential is the better fit. And when you explain why you chose this model, you could say it's because the R value for the exponential fit is higher. All right, I hope this helped.